First, I became interested in the subject as an undergraduate at Cornell University in 1947. Uh, I returned home to my home in Lima, Ohio, uh, to join my father in business. And uh, at that time, I was still curious, and I found that a university nearby, Ohio Northern University, was having a special study uh, initiated by some professors over there in the engineering department. Uh, because that was happening and it got in the news, I contacted a friend I had on the faculty over there and asked if I could be of assistance because it was, again, the flying saucer was the subject and that uh, was kind of curious. I did so. They accepted me and I turned in some reports which came to my attention because it had been noted in the newspaper that Timmerman was interested in the subject. That was the beginning. Uh, it, it was Project A. That was concluded about a year later because they didn't have enough information to make it really significant. Later, I began to pay attention to the serious groups in the country who were studying this subject, APRO, NICAP, and uh, I joined NICAP and began receiving their publications. And for many uh, years, I did read some of that stuff and read books that were coming out. Then I became busy with other things, and it kind of drifted away. But I had the opportunity to sell what I had formed as a heating and air conditioning contracting company. And uh, I sold the company and uh, was, at that point, curious about Dr. Hynek. I'd heard about him and I read his books decided to offer my assistance to him because I was told I didn't need to be at the office all the time. And uh, I sent him a check for $100 and said, what can I do to help you? And he must have thought the $100 looked pretty good. So <laughs> anyway, he uh, called me up and offered to meet me in Columbus, Ohio, which he did. We had a nice luncheon together there at the Highlight Restaurant. And uh, my son was with me and with us at the table, and I tape recorded that conversation. So I have that tape of that first conversation with Alan. He was describing members of the board and his uh, reaction to what they were doing or not doing that he felt would be a way to improve the organization. And I guess he was trying to feed me with ideas. Anyway, I began to be going to meetings that following month or so in the fall of 1979. And uh, I, uh, within a month, was given a case to examine up near Chagrin Falls. It was a physical trace case. And it was interesting. It was on the lawn of a, uh, an executive, a retired executive. Lovely place. Nice pond out front. And uh, that got me interested because it was a curious, t curious case. Anyway, I stayed and went, began going to meetings in Chicago in 1980. I was pointing out to Dr. Hynek that he was going broke. He didn't realize that he was that the income was far less than the outgo, so we had to make some changes. And uh, so for that reason, he decided I should be the treasurer. And the man who had been the chairman of the group many years, uh, a friend of his in California, was unable to come to meetings in Chicago, so. He asked me to preside at the meetings so that he could feed the ideas to the board and discuss things without worrying about the, the protocol of a meeting, so to speak. And so I helped him in that way. Uh, that was my initiation with Alan Hynek, and it was a very wonderful relationship. We were good friends. I helped him in a number of ways, handled some of his correspondence, and. Uh, had the opportunity to get to know some of the very interesting people in this subject, particularly very good witnesses to important cases which are still historically significant.